Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel One on One. So you know I love Isidium and their expert course, a Cinema 4D plugin. And that's why I'm always stalking their page to see some new exciting stuff uh, they do there. And uh, this one is by Rui de la Rocha. Shout out to the artist. So yeah, I wanted to recreate that droplet effect. You can use it for a lot of other effects. Uh, the project files are going to be available on my Patreon page, on Gumroad and my YouTube channel page. So you can see what we are having here. Control uh, the position of these droplets. I can even uh, elongate them. Uh, so the drop detail that they always going to along whatever surface you add them onto. So for example, if I use a Suzanne head here and I see what we have. Okay, so let's see how to set this up. I'm just going to copy the rock. Perfect. So let's start. We can start with a, a plane. Just move this up. Let me go to geometry nodes here. I'm going to add a line mesh like this. Now we want it to go on the X axis. So I'll do X offset. So negative one and we can use endpoints for the mode and uh, just use negative one and positive one uh, like that. And I'm just going to push this a bit back like that. Now we're going to instance a few lines on this, a few curves on this line. So I'm going to use instance on points like this. And I want to get some curve lines as the instance. And I want them to be going in the, uh, this time in the Y direction. Okay, let me just rotate this like this. Okay going in the Y direction so I can increase the count and I can even expose that like that so we can access it right here and play with the scale a bit just like that. So what we want to do is have these conform to the rock and uh, to do that we're going to come in here and use a ray cast. Basically what a ray cast does it casts rays on the mesh down to the target and uh, we can use the heat position as the position of uh, the curve and that will conform our points to the mesh. So to do that, we need a target and the target is going to be a rock. So let me drag that here and just connect that and set it to relative so that whenever the rock moves, the hit point also moves. So now I can use a set position, set position. Now, if I connect the position, the position, you see, we get something, but uh, it's not working correctly as expected because these are instances and we need to realize those instances like that. Another issue we're going to have is that uh, we don't have enough points on this curve. So I will do a resample curve so that we have many points. We don't want this to override the original position. We're just going to put this in the offset so that we have something like that. Now we're getting that. The issue is that we want just to offset this in the Z position. We don't want to offset any other axis. So I'm just going to use a separate XY and then a combined XY and I just connect the Z so that we just have a projection of other points like that. Now, I don't want these leftover points, so I'll do late points. Another great thing is that uh, this raycast also gives us a heat option. By using that, we can, uh, I think it's deleting the opposite. So let me just do uh, a Boolean math with the not. Yeah, so that we delete just the right points. Now. We don't, we seem to not have enough resolution. So I'm going to bump that up even further. So you can see our line that right now, nearly half of the tutorial is done. And you can see when I move this or when I move this, or let me first actually disable the delete so that you see what I mean. So whenever, when I move this, the target also updates, which is nice. But I want it back. It's time to turn this into actual droplets. For that, we are just going to use our curve to mesh and I use a curve circle for that. Just going to bring this radius down. Uh, the resolution doesn't have to be that, that much. Let me turn on random colors here. So see what we have. That's great. Uh, we can use a set radius to give our curve a teardrop look. And uh, so the radius is going to be value dependent on the length of the spline. So I'm going to do a, a spline parameter, connect the factor into the radius. And uh, you can see we have something like that. Now to animate these, all we have to do is before the curve to mesh, we can do a trim curve. And uh, you can see I can now animate the end. Uh, it seems they're going in the wrong direction. So let me just rotate uh, this 90 degrees. So I can extend them a bit like that. If we play with the start, you see what we get. We can shorten them. And if we play with the end, we can move them ahead. 
So if we use a random value in the end here, uh, that means that uh, we can offset the position of these so that they're not always ending at, at the same stage. Now we can also introduce this on the start value so that all of them are not as long. Uh, one other thing we need to do is make sure that uh, this set radius is after the trim curve because we want the radius of this to be determined by its length. When we trim it, we change the length, meaning we want that to be updated as well. So you can see when we animate this, they become shorter. And so you can make them longer or you can make them but when we animate the end, they move to the end, but they become also longer. So what we can do is just animate these values at the same time. So let's do a one there and a one there. And because the end and start are the same, they're basically disappearing. So what we can do is add a math node here and just determine the length of these by this value. And now if I animate this value, this value here, you can see I'm basically animating uh, their position. Now, when you look at uh, the end area, we don't have end caps, so let's do that by adding the fill, but uh, they don't look like a teardrop. To shape them into a teardrop, we're going to use an extrude mesh. Now we want only faces. And uh, so I want a selection of this face here. So that is the only thing that is being extruded. And to do that, I'm just going to use face neighbors. Now that's going to give me the face count and the uh, face vertex count. Uh, I only want the vertex count because you can see all the other polygons are four vertices, but uh, this face here is more than that. If I try to show you what I'm doing here, we can use the vertex count. I can use a compare node and uh, make sure that uh, the vertex we select, the face we select has more than has more than four vertices, which will give us this this face selection, and now we can connect that to the selection of the extrude, giving us an extrusion like that. And I want to scale that extrusion, so I'll use a scale elements and uh, select the top, use this top as, as the selection, and scale it down like that, and uh, maybe the extrusion, push it around like that. And uh, we, we want to do another extrusion just to add enough resolution for this. So I'll connect this again. Now, again, we need the top selection here, so you can see just let me scale this up a bit. So we're trying to create a teardrop effect. Now from there, I can use a subdivision surface to smoothen everything. And look at that. We have our teardrop that we can again try and shape here. Now, one issue we have is that if I try to scale out the radius, the teardrop is not scaling at the same time. So what I, what I can do is use a value that scales everything here. So I can use a value of one and uh, just multiply it using a math node, multiply it by whatever value I have here. So this, uh, this is 0 0.02 and that should be our new radius. Cause I want, whenever I scale this, it should also scale the teardrop. Uh, so I'm going to just try and multiply them all at once. So this is the new value there and also this is a 0.99 so this by that becomes that and again here again here 0 0.02 becomes that and 0 0.5 comes that so this single value should be can be used to scale things up and uh, see this extrusion is a bit too much so i can come back here and see what I can trick, maybe somewhere like that. So now we don't want it to be too much. So around that is good. I uh, can do a shade smooth and that uh, smoothen things up. Okay. And now all you're left with is materials and animation. So you can expose these parameters. So for example, let me just grab a group node here. And, uh, instead of using this, I can just all of these like that. That could be the, the tip scale. Uh, this is the teardrop length. Oh, yeah, this is the teardrop position. You just have to expose those parameters. I uh, do a set material. So if we look at uh, the original version, 
Yeah, and maybe this could be bloody. Yeah. You know, we have trail. Mm, just look at how this droplet is actually also going up. Uh, one, other, one other thing I added in my version is that I didn't show off here. See, these are all moving in, this, in a straight line. What you could do is before the ray cast, before realizing these, you could do a set position and uh, add some noise uh, in the X and Y values. So add some noise. Okay, that's too much and uh, we need to subtract the offset, the noise offset. That's obviously too much. So I'm going to use a vector math with a scale, something like that. And uh, maybe in the Y as well. So I'm just going to duplicate this and just so have this in the Y. Now, now sh this should be, let's see, you can see this is projected, but uh, because we have introduced some noise, so this is before the noise, everything is straight. Now then it goes something like that. Yeah, everything that now develops develops after that. So now if we look at the final result, you see some bit of noise. So it's not just going in a straight line. It has some randomization. And uh, so again, without noise, with noise. Project files are going to be on my Patreon page, my Gumroad page, and also on my YouTube membership page. Uh, like I said, I want to get more into this sort of uh, tutorials that uh, you can use on a client project. So I'm also working on another tutorial, again from Isidium. They have a lot of amazing th things. Yeah, I'm still rendering this, but uh, it's just uh, a strawberry being cut in half. Uh, basically, it's this project here. That's what I'm trying to remake here. I'm going to polish this animation. That's what we'll learn in the next video. Thank you for watching. So don't forget to subscribe and like and uh, turn on notifications uh, for when that is up. Thank you.